many things happen. And here he is, so our esteemed chief guest. Come on, let us hear it louder. A very, very good morning to you, sir. A scientist, a poet, an author, an orator, uh, the person who was fondly known as the people's president during his tenure, but above all, most important, a visionary. It is a privilege to have amongst us today a teacher, a guide, and a person who passionately drives all of us and the country and gives us the courage to dream. On behalf of India 75, CII, YI, and our YI Nets, the Indira Group of Institutes, I extend a very, very warm welcome to our chief guest this morning, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. At a time when every stakeholder in the country is becoming more and more aware of his individual social responsibility, at a time when every youngster in the country wants to be heard, has a voice that wants to be heard, at a time when YI, Young Indians, the youth wing of CII, an integral part of CII, with 26 chapters across the country, 8,500 farmer nets, 5,500 student nets, has been working in various verticals like education, health, employability, youth affairs, arts, sports and culture, representing the country and being the voice of young Indians globally at uh, young uh, summits, at the G20 summits, at the Kai summits, at a time when we are celebrating a decade of our existence, who better than Dr. Kalam to guide us and teach us how to channelize our energies together in a positive direction. I would now like to call upon the CII Pune Zoni Council Chair, Mr. Raja Kochal, to please say a few words. Thank you, Ritu. So it is indeed a pleasure and privilege to be here today with you. Thank you so much for coming in. And once again, welcome to all of you as well. On behalf of CII, on my personal behalf, it is my pleasure to talk to you a little bit about this session here today. India at 75. I happened to be in New York at the time when Rajan mentioned that Sikri Prahlad started the India at 75 initiative. And it really is near and dear to my heart as well. The positive powers of India is what we're going to be talking about and certainly the positive powers of society and you heard Rajan talk a little bit about that today. But it truly makes a difference. When Mother Teresa was asked would she join an anti-war rally, she said no, but she would consider a pro-peace rally. So the positive aspects are much more powerful than the negative connotations that we typically end up coming together for. We've seen India come together many, many times, but usually amongst negative or negative type of situations. We come together for protests, but we truly believe that if we come together to make a positive difference, we can make a huge difference. And we've got a lot to offer. We've got the youngest democracy, we're the largest democracy, and we've got the power, positive powers of all of you, the youth of India. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rajan to set the context for Mr. Kalam's session. Welcome again. We have our own local visionary, like Dr. Kalam. 
whether you meet him socially or professionally, all he talks about is the country. And all he talks about is how we can all drive ourselves to build a better India by 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call upon Mr. Rajan Manani, Chairperson, Chairman of India at 75, to please set the context for the morning. Thank you, Ethi. Your words are too kind. <laughs> but Dr. Kalam, thank you so much, so much for being here today. I still remember when I came and met you to invite you. The only question he asked was, are the young of the country going to be there? And I said, you know what, we are at an institute. We are, we are here at an institute which has led a lot of the youth efforts in the city that has brought young people together, that too in a very short time. You know, the Indira and Chetan Vakalkar and they who have led this are actually representative of the change that young people can make in this nation. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalam, for being here and agreeing to be here with us. The other main, other point that I had mentioned to you when we did meet was really how do we leverage society which keeps coming together so strongly, you know, positively as we go ahead. And we had discussed, you had led earlier with us, you know, campaigns on integrity, India for integrity, India for honesty. And we keep saying that instead of having slogans like India against corruption or India against something, how do we really make a noise about talking of things that are positive, things that can change and that can actually translate in larger change on the ground? You know, often we compare India with China and we say that, you know, China has been able to make so much change. Let's take some of our bureaucrats and send them there. You know, China has a very strong state it has a weak society. What we have at our strength is really a very strong society. And I think each person in society today realizes that, you know, their role goes beyond just electing a government. Society needs to play a much larger role in a country like India compared to several other countries. And we live in a country that gives us that opportunity to be able to make that positive change. We are very fortunate for the democracy, for the rights that we have that enables us to participate in that change. And, you know, we have initiated this concept of an individual social responsibility, which again Dr. Kalam had endorsed a few years back, which really talks about how can we as individuals participate in changing India. Not only by giving our time and skills and money, but also by seeing methods by way of which we consume. And we need to consume in partnership with nature. We need to see how we can consume water, energy, etc. far more effectively compared to how the other nations that have developed over the years have consumed and abused nature to be able to see, you know, growth and development. And it was in that context that Dr. Kalam had at that point endorsed this vision and said, I think there is a great merit in getting individuals to be recognized those who have, you know, high scores of individual social responsibility. And I would like to, you know, inform you, Dr. Kalam, that we are on the process in that journey of seeing how people who are socially responsible can not only be recognized, we are working with government exactly the way CSR 20 years ago was just a concept practiced by, you know, two or three companies in India. We heard Tata is doing it, we heard Goodrich is, we heard a few companies doing it. Today, no annual report of a company is complete without pages of CSR. Similarly, we believe the individual will only be recognized in society, will be done, will be given prominence, given tax base, given whatever it takes based on how they participate in building the nation. And therefore, this theme today, which is about how do we positively leverage society, you know, to, to create the India which you have envisioned. You know, you have envisioned an India which will have economic strength, technological vitality, moral leadership. It's exactly the same India that each of us, whether it's India at 75, whether it's young Indians, are all dreaming collaboratively of. For the first time we find different stakeholders in our country actually coming together to say, yes, we want a developed India. You know, we did an aspiration study of young in India and we found that the aspiration for a better livelihood for themselves and the next generation stood out as the one common thread that United Indians today, like the need for freedom, did in the 30s and 40s. And we say, how do they achieve this livelihood is really the question. What are the means that we will use are really the things that will ensure that we as a nation, you know, actually move from a developing nation to a developed nation. Never in the history of mankind has a nation of over a billion people moved from being a developing nation to a developed nation. 
This is an opportunity that all of us who live in this era have to actually see how we can transform this country through our participation in bringing about that change. And it is in this context that, you know, I would like to now invite Dr. Abdul Kalam to kindly share with us his thoughts on how can we start positively participating. Uh, friends, my greetings to all of you. You know, I have, uh, uh, before I start my lecture, I will give you two lines, okay? And you respond to the two lines, okay? First one, what you can give me, what you can give me, okay? Uh, keep in mind, what you can give me. The next line, what can I give you? What can I? Which is better? All the trouble starts from the first one, isn't it? What can I take? <laughs> what can I take? So, the what can I give is indeed, if we start thinking, all of us, what can I give? What can I give? What can I give? You will end a beautiful India you have a beautiful world also. Now, I want to, instead of, uh, I am going to talk to you anyway, the topic I am going to talk to you, enlightened youth is an asset of our nation. That's the topic I am going to talk to you. Before that, I want two students, two students, you should, I will give you, each one of you, two minutes, okay, two minutes. You should come to the dais, and you must say what I can give. So topic is, what the topic? Only students have to come, okay? Two, who are the volunteers? Who are the volunteers? One, the last one, last one. Yes, come, come, rush, rush, rush. You can come, or difficult to come. Difficult to come? One, one guy, that guy is coming, one more, one more girl should come. Yes? Uh, both of you come. Okay. So, stay the way and give the mic to them. They are coming upstairs. Only, I landed, only two boys landed, eh? Okay. Okay. You introduce yourself. And give a speech for two minutes what you are going to give. What I can give. That's the topic I have given to you. What can I give? Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon. First, I will categorize what I can give to the world. I'll start from my parents. They give me birth. I want to give everything that they want in the world. And next thing comes to, to my society, to my India, to my country. And I would like to give everything I can give. The knowledge I have gained. I like to utilize my knowledge to improve my country, to increase the GDP in terms of finance. As I am a finance student. Very good. Next, 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 next. Very good. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected sir. Oh. I would like. Uh, I would. I don't want to talk about the GDP of India and the we world. And the the we work on what I want to give is my honesty and my time because time is a precious thing. You cannot uh, get it back once you lose it. Whether it be in terms of knowledge or in terms of learning from your teachers, the distinguished guests, or anybody, whoever who teach you anything in terms of what you can learn in the future is your time. So that's all. So we want to give you a time. Very good. Sure. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, what I can give... What I can give is my consistency, my hard work. 
and the future generation the knowledge to learn from me so that they can uh, carry forward the generation and do something to give a better desert nation okay knowledge and time knowledge what will give knowledge and will give time and will see to that our economic progress thank you thank you okay. <laughs> friends you just you can see how the young people think that's why i asked them to come okay now i would like to greet uh, mr rajan nabani chairman ci national committee of india raja uh, shri raja kachar uh, ritu natani ji and shri chetan vakalka uh, and shri raja kachar and all of you friends uh, wish you all the best and greetings uh, i am delighted to address and interact with the students uh, participating in the young indians and india at 75 program my greetings to all organizers a uh, participating youth young indians special invitees and distinguished guests first of all uh, this uh, india at 75 program i hope will provide a bridge for the innovative ideas of the youth and the natural experience of the experienced for the prosperity of the nation i realize how the contribution of the youth in the past have continuously contributed to the world of today in many fields i would like to assert i would like to assert no youth today need to fear about the future how the united mind of the youth is the most powerful resource on the earth above the earth under the earth if you have a goal in life and continuously acquire the knowledge and work hard with confidence to win and have the and to defeat the have the confident defeat the problems and succeed with the righteous heart you will definitely succeed in all your missions it does not matter who you are today i would like to share few thoughts on yellow an an enlightened youth is an asset of our nation enlightened youth asset of the nation now uh, friends when i see you in the first month of uh, when i see you when i see you all of you uh, in this uh, auditorium um thousands representing the different parts of uh, uh, this um, uh, pune who are supposed to be remembered for a unique achievement i have a message for you uh, to be remembered to be remembered for you have to be unique you have to be remembered for you have to be unique now i have taken certain people of unique people so you will be with me okay you will interact with me yeah. now you see this light and bulb whom do you remember <laughs> immediately you remember thomas alva edison uh, because he is he he has uh, uh, he did a uh, unique contribution to the invention of electric bulb and this electrical lighting system whenever you hear in pune number of aircraft flying all around but you remember two guys right those they can when the telephone bell rings alexander graham bell remembers now there was one great scientist indian scientist he was traveling from london to calcutta in 1930s when he reached to calcutta <coughs> it was the evening hours sun was shining and the horizon sea horizon was blue sky was blue and sea was blue he asked the question why why sky is blue sea is blue he just worked very hard for 7 years and he discovered he became a nobel prize winner can you think of the person sir c raman discovered back scattering of the light because of that that phenomena has take place so there is a one great mathematician he in uh, in intermediate in intermediate 10 plus 2 in those is no 10 plus 2 intermediate he he wrote all the exam he he failed every exam except mathematics 
we could not progress further. But there was one fellow, in from UK, Professor Hardy. Uh, he saw his papers, cherished him, made him great mathematicians. And uh, in number theory, uh, he even now is an authority. His problems are being solved by hundreds and hundreds. Can you think of a person? He was a Ramanujan. The only lady who got two Nobel Prizes. One for radium discovery, another for characterizing the radio metals. So, Madam Query, she got. So, friends, you will find the always we have a question now. All of us have got a question. How long sun will shine? If sun does not shine, earth will not be there. But one scientist, he discovered what's called Chandra limit. Using the Chandra limit, you can calculate how long sun will shine. I calculated. It says 10 billion years sun is going to shine. Of half over, another 5 billion years are there, no problem. <laughs> okay. But a small equation, central element, is discovered by the man who discovered the black hole. Chandra, Chandra Shekhar Subramanian. Now, you will find friends, they have given 8 people. 8 achievers. Just I tell them, I say bulb, Light immediately you can say Thomas Alva Edison. Okay? And when I said aircraft immediately you can say Wright Brothers. And telephone bell rings you remember Alexander Graham Bell. And uh, backscattering of light you can think of Nobel or at uh, our uh, Sir Sri Raman. And number theory man you can remember Chandish, uh, the Srinivas uh, Ramadijam. And Chandra limit, of course, Sinvasar uh, Subramaniam, Chandrasekhar Subramaniam. And two Nobel Prize, you remember, Madam Curie. Now all these eight people, why do you remember them? Because they are, because they are unique. The question is, whether, can all of you can hear me? Whether every one of you want to be unique. Uh, friends, so far I have met uh, 12 million youths in a decade's time in your age group and below. I learned, what did I learn when I meet, interact with them? I learned every youth wants to be unique. That is you. But the world all around you is doing its best day and night to make you just to everybody else. Do you follow? Just to day and night. Day and night. Day and night. The world all around you is doing its best day and night to make you just to everybody else. When, they, when you want to be unique. At home, dear young friends, you are asked by your parents to be like neighbor's children for scoring good marks. When you go to school, your teacher says, why not you become the first five rangers in the class? Wherever you go, they are saying you have to be somebody else or everybody else. Now, dear young friends, how many of you would like to be unique yourself? How many of you? You want to be unique. Now, the challenge, if you want to be unique, the challenge, my young friends, is that you have to fight the hardest battle which any human being can ever imagine to fight and never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place that is unique you. Friends, what will be your tools to fight the battle? You can't take a gun. But knowledge, knowledge is your tool. So when I study these eight people, unique people, I found they had a Four unique qualities. All of them had four unique qualities. So I, I have done some work on these eight people. What are the unique qualities they had? Great aim. Not small aim. Number one, they had great aim. Small aim is a crime. So they had a great aim. Number two, they continuously acquired the knowledge. 
continuous non-stop, continuous acquires the knowledge through great books, through great human beings, through great teachers. Number three, of course, you have to sweat hard work, sweat and sweat and sweat. Fourth is perseverance. They are not afraid of the problem. They become captain of the problem, defeat the problem and succeed. So these are the four unique qualities. Can you think of number one? Great life. Number two? A continuously acquired knowledge. Number three? Hard work. Number four? Perseverance. So I now dear friends, how many of now I am sure all of you want to become a unique people. Yes. Let me share with you some experience that will lead you to think with confidence, act with confidence and succeed with confidence. In December 2011, I was in a village called Paravur near Kochi, Kerala. I went to the village to inaugurate the program of Sakrayan which means science propagation. During the program, the president of the Paravur Panjayat board and the local MLA said, the mission of Sastrayan in Paravur is to ensure preparation of 2,000 students from different schools towards attaining eligibility for entrance as engineers, scientists, doctors, qualified managers and civil service officers. This action will empower 2,000 families of the village. My inaugural address to Paravur audience consisting of 5,000 students and the family members was Science Empowers the Nation. That is the topic I gave the talk. After my address, there were hundreds of hands put up for asking questions. Due to limited availability of time, I selected 12 students Ask me questions. I would like to share with you two questions of concern asked by the students in your type. One tenth class girl asked me, Mr. Kalam, next year I have to take the subject for my specialization. You know that. Plus one, you have to take a subject. I have to take the subject for my specialization. I love psychology. This girl wants psychology. My parents say no to the subject. My parents say no to the subject. They want me to take the subject that will enable me to enter the professional course. What should I do? My what should I? What should I do? What should I? What I should I do? She has asked me. Please give me ideas. I thought of it. I told the girl, "You have a great tool to win your parent that is love and affection." Similarly, your parents also love you. Hence, they can and they yearn and borrow for your education and they would like to ensure that you are properly positioned in your professional life. But I respect your dream and definitely I am confident you can pursue your parents. You know, I said, the any student likes whatever you want to do, you must take, then only you will shine. So, I was for her. But her parents' intention is to see the girl to come up. So what do we do? Now, this, uh, what happened is, when, uh, when the conversation going on, two people got up at that time. That is, the students, girl students, father and mother. And they got up. And they said, we are the father and mother of the girl, the student. We respect your view. That is, uh, children who love the subject should be given the, uh, given the option to take. So we have decided my daughter will take psychology for her higher studies. So there was a big cheer there. All the people appreciated the parents that they have decided their girl will have the psychology what she loves. The next important question was from a 8th class boy called Vishnu who had come from a far away environment from the city. He was nervous and represented the youth in Indian village environment. The boy started with telling his name, my name is Vishu. I don't know what should I ask. 
I am nervous. I have not asked any question in my class so far. I need to have confidence. I am not gaining confidence through education during the last seven years. I am afraid to talk to my teachers. I am afraid to talk to my friends. Whenever I talk, I compare myself with other students. Please tell me, Mr. Kalam, how can I become a unique person which you just now explained? I want to become a marine engineer. I want to travel in the ship. I want to be the captain of the ship. I want to build the engine for the ship. Will I be able to do all this, Mr. Kala? When the boy completed, how can I achieve this mission? What should I do? When the boy completed the question, the whole audience of 5,000 people and the dignitaries in the dais, including Chief Minister, they are looking at me, what Kalam is going to say for such a shivering question. I thought of it. I thought of it. I want to break the silence. I said, my dear Vishu, you have, to put the most, you have put the most difficult question so far I have received from the millions and millions of students whom I have met. Vishu, I value your question. Also, I consider you are echoing the question of millions and millions of rural students. Then slowly, I gain the confidence to the answer. To answer, let us both recite a beautiful ancient poem called "I Will Fly." I slowly started telling the poem. The boy also started repeating the poem with me. Will you repeat? Yes, sir. You are ready. Yes, sir. Name of the poem: "I Will Fly." I will. Yes. I will fly. I am. I am, I am born with potential. Born with potential. I, am I am born with goodness and trust. I am, I am born with ideas and dreams. I am, dreams. I am, born, with I am born with greatness. greatness. I am born with, I am born with confidence. confidence. I am born with wings. So, so, I am not meant for crawling because I have wings. I fly, I fly, I fly. When the boy, we should finish reciting this poem, he was in tears. He said, he has gained confidence, he will win and win and run off. Okay, that's a story. <laughs> So then, the question from these two students at Pavu reveal that students are not stressed in the choice of their subjects after 10 plus and 10 plus 2 and the education is not giving the student the confidence that I can do it. Okay? I can do it. So I would suggest the educators and teachers participating in this program, wherever they are, to understand the problem of the rural youth and create an environment and teaching methodology which will make the youth feel confident to face the world and embark on difficult mission toward the national development. Let me share an incident which I experienced in this city in this many years ago. It, in Delhi it happened, friends, that uh, uh, in the, that is uh, in, in Hyderabad, it happened in Hyderabad. I can do it. When I was in the president of India, I met a group of tribal students. I used to meet every day about 200 students, uh, uh, 4 to 5. 4 to 5, every day I used to meet them. So one day, it's from uh, uh, tribal students of uh, Andhra Pradesh. About 200 students were with me. And it was on 28 August 2006. I asked all of them one question. What do you want to be, say, after education? Or what is the dream you are working for? Out of many response, one visually challenged boy studying ninth class got up. Uh, he, he said, my name is Srikant. And uh, he answered me, I will become, I will become the first visually challenged president of India. I was very happy to see his vision and ambition. Small aim is a crime. Hence, I congratulated uh, Srikant to realize his vision and told him to work for realizing the vision. Thereafter, the boy 
Srikant worked very hard, got 90% 10 plus and 96% intermediate 10 plus 2 and he set a goal to study engineering in the MIT Boston USA. He said learn a relentless hard work, not only secured seat but got full waiver for MIT Boston. Srikant's achievement has brought changes in many change agents in Lead India 2020 and inspired to set a high vision. Now friends, now he is, uh, he is working very hard and uh, at uh, MIT Boston and uh, G, he's, a, he's a, a public uh, in the uh, an industry, in the private sector industry which sponsored for his uh, uh, tour. They have written him a letter. As soon as you finish your Boston study, MIT study, you come to India, a job is will be waiting for you. For that, Srikant writes a letter. He says, Mr. CEO, definitely I will come and take up uh, your your uh, offer. But if I don't become a president of India, first we shall challenge president of India. So this indicates the how you can, I can do it, the confidence the boy has got. Now, dear friends, when I can sing a song of India, I want to tell you something. In India Vision 2020 definitely inspires everyone, particularly youth of the nation. I am experiencing this whenever I interact with the youth. I recall a situation in 1990 when I was interacting with the youth in, in, uh, uh, in Ahmedabad. One girl asked me, when I can sing a song of India? You know, suddenly after 45 minutes my talk, the, the student got up and said, when I can sing a song of India? I asked you to come to Dias. She came to Dias. Tell me what does it mean, what the meaning of She says, I have a brother, elder brother. He is in Michigan University. And every Friday evening, he calls my father, mother and myself. Talks, America is beautiful. America road is beautiful. America riverway is beautiful. American technology beautiful. Everything beautiful for him. And every week my, he, my brother T.S. That's why I have asked you Mr. Kala when I can sing a song of India. Free you follow. Then I told her yes you can sing a song of India by the year 2020. There is a mission India 2020 vision how to become an economically developed nation. So friends in the meaning since I am in the midst of the Indians I would like to present my visualization what type of India you would, you would be after your educational career or college, when you come out of the college, what type of India you are going to see? I am giving a visualization, another seven years time, how India can transform if you work very hard, 600 million youth work hard, definitely another seven years time, 2020, a distinct profile of India will look like this. Number one, a nation where the rural and urban divide is reduced to a thin line. A nation where there is equitable distribution and adequate access to the energy and quality water. A nation where agriculture, industry, agriculture, industry and service sector work together in symphony. A nation where education with value system is not denied to any meritorious candidate because of societal or economic discrimination. A nation which is the best destination for the most talented scholars, scientists and investors. A nation where the best of healthcare is available to all. A nation where the governance is responsive, transparent and corruption free. A nation where poverty has been totally eradicated, illiteracy removed and crimes against women and children are absent and none in the society feels alienated. A nation that prosperous, healthy, secure, devoid of terrorism, peaceful, happy and continuous with a sustainable, sustainable growth path. A nation that is one of the best places to live in and is proud of its leadership. Now, to achieve all the 10 points, 10 pillars of development. The distinct problem of India, we have the mission of transforming India into an economically developed nation. We identify five areas where India has a core competence for integrated action.
agriculture, agro food processing, education and healthcare, women education particularly, information communication technology to connect 600,000 villages where 7 million people live, and infrastructure, reliable quality electric power, surface transport, and uh, uh, and also self-reliance in critical technologies. These five areas are closely interrelated and uh, progressing in a progress in a coordinated way, leading to food, economic, and national security. I would suggest each one of you select an important task pertaining pertaining to any of the ten pillars which I have described based on your interest and core competence. This will make you a partner in the national development. In conclusion, friends, let us study the connectivity of the economic development, connectivity of economic development of the nation, connectivity of the economic development of the nation, and the leadership, creative leadership. Since I am the minister of the students, let me discuss the linkage between national economic development and creative leadership. A nation's economic development is powered by is powered by what? Somebody said GDP, you know? Isn't it? The nation's economic development is powered by competitiveness. Now, competitiveness is powered by knowledge, knowledge power. The knowledge power is powered by, powered by technology and innovation. Technology innovation is powered by resource investment. Resource investment is powered by return on investment. Return on investment is powered by revenue. Revenue is powered by volume and repeat sales. Volume and repeat sales is powered by customer loyalty. The customer loyalty is powered by quality and value of products. Quality of value of products is powered by employee productivity and innovation. Employee productivity is powered by employee loyalty. Employee loyalty is powered by employee satisfaction. Employee satisfaction is powered by working environment. Working environment is powered by management innovation. Working, working, working environment is powered by management innovation. Management innovation is powered by creative leadership. Where did I start? I started economic development. Land in the creative leadership. For success in all this mission, it is essential to have a creative leaders. Each one of you has to transform as a creative leaders. Creative leadership means exercise, exercising the vision to change the traditional role from the commander to the coach, manager to mentor, uh, from director to educator, and from one who demands respect to one who facilitates self-respect. For enhancing the enterprise value, we need a large number of creative leaders. At this stage, let me recall Mahmoud Padanjali's mode stated about 2,500 years ago. What did he say? He said, quote, when you are inspired, when you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bounds. Your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction. And you find yourself in a new, great and wonderful world. Dharma forces, faculties, Talents come alive and you discover yourself to be a great person by far than you ever dreamt for yourself to be. My greetings and best wish to all your success in your educational mission. May God bless you all. Wish you all the best. Now, you are, you are not tired, I suppose. Okay, then you can take the oath. Okay, vote for the youth. Okay, vote for the youth. I will, I will have a goal and work hard to achieve that goal. I realize small aim is a crime. Small aim, small aim. I will work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Very tough, very tough. I will work with integrity and succeed with integrity. You guys, you take this oath, all of you, you know. It's very important. 21st century, uh, success, success mandra depends on you have to work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Third one, I will be, I will be, good member of my family, 
good member of the society, good member of the nation, and a good member of the world. Will you? Will you? I will. Always protect and enhance the dignity of every human life without any bias. I will always work for clean home, clean planet Earth, and clean energy. As a youth of my nation, as a youth of my nation, I will work and work with courage to achieve success and in all my tasks and enjoy success of others. Enjoy. I am as young. I am as young as my faith, as old as my doubt. Hence, I will light up them the lamp of faith in my heart. My national flag flies in my heart and I will bring glory to my nation. Thank you. You are all smart, smart students. My friends, I I can take five, five, five questions, okay, from student community, okay. Who will start? Dr. Kalam, uh, Rajinya. You know, they, they have collected about no, 150 no, questions. No, no. Yeah, yeah. We will we'll ask no, them to ask no, five no. questions. I, I will ask you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let the independent question come. Okay, okay. okay, okay. All right. Okay. Anybody can ask questions, okay? I don't want selective questions. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Eh? Salam Asutos Agrahari. I want to live in India that is a strong nation on all counts and we are all working for it. But there are many factors that youth are not interested in and one of them is uh, agriculture. So sir, uh, how do we get the youth to participate and actively play a role in this? You know, in agriculture, we is a good question. There are uh, at the moment 170 million hectares we used to produce 250 million ton of food every year. This year, last year is 250 million ton of food. Now, by 2020, there will not be 170 million hectares will not be available for cultivation. Only to expect 95, 90 million, 95 to 100 million hectares should be available. Second, water is not going to, water is not going to increase. The demand will be more, it will decrease. Third one, the number of farmers working in agriculture will also reduce uh, because uh, nowhere in the world, 60-70% uh, of the people in the farming for producing 250 million tons of food. So they also will go to service sector, industrial sector. So the reduced manpower, reduced water, and uh, reduced land, how do you get from 250 million tons of food to about 300 plus, that 350 million tons by 2025 we need? How do you do that? Only technology. So a lot of young people have to work in the various type of technology agriculture, for example, agro, not only for, for produce agriculture, produce agro processing. In processing, they have to work. Marketing, they have to work. And then new technology in cultivation, you have to bring in. For example, new technology, how do you do the value addition in the produce of the wheat and the rice uh, through the type of uh, uh, various uh, uh, high yield varieties we need and the cultivation methods have to change by cooperative movement we have to bring in so the large land can be ploughed together and also marketing we can do so lot of challenges in the agriculture lot of young people have to participate in that mission okay good question yes 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 go ahead good so my name is Lokesh and I am from Vishwakarma Institute of Management where are you uh, so you okay 
सो माई क्वेश्चन इज वे डू यू सी इंडिया एंड चाइना बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एज बोथ आर कंसिडर्ड एज फ्यूचर सुपर पावर न्यूक्लियर सुपर पावर वेल आई यू एम नॉट इंटरेस्टेड सुपर पावर एंड ऑल ओके बट आई वॉन्ट टेल यू वी आर अ बिलियन पीपल ओके इंडिया इज गॉट अ बिलियन पीपल बिलियन पीपल the economically has to be developed that means the poverty now about 300 million people one third of the people below poverty line that will lift it up okay we have vision india 2020 one of the very important force should be the power electric power electric power we should get away from the fossil fuel all these lights come from uh, thermal power station most of the thermal power station what we need is energy independence so india should go for energy independence where you use solar power wind power nuclear power and hydro power and biofuel that's a 2030 20, 2050 you should be get away with the fossil fuel so that clean india is possible clean planet earth is possible china also may work for that in that line for clean china okay okay yes 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 good afternoon mike mike push the mic fast yeah shout over us uh, good afternoon sir so today india needs to focus on the inclusive growth of the country and uh, we are seeing the growth in the pockets and while the other parts of the country are not receiving those uh, benefits so uh, how do you suggest to bridge this gap and the uh, role of students in bridging this gap See, students. I want to tell you, student job is education. Okay, your mission is education. You do best in the education. You will create engineers. You will give technologies. Good, good IAS officer. Good leaders. All will come if you do well in the education. You should not get diverted from that. But inclusive, sustained development. How do you get the sustained development? It's a big question. For that, for that only, India now we have started a program. What is called Pura? Pura means providing urban amenities in the rural area. We have got 600,000 villages in India. 700 million people live there. Uh, so this is divided into 7,000 clusters of Pura. So you give the physical connectivity, the electronic connectivity, knowledge connectivity in the villages, and then the economic connectivity will come. So now the the private people, private sectors, uh, com composite sector, uh, the and also government has uh, taken up the sustained development model. Pura is a very important mission to have a, a to to cover the whole country. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Where are you? Where are you? Oh ah, yes. I'm Ankita Ramjila from ICM. so we all envision of creating a developed nation by 2020 and uh, i believe that values are a key ingredient in transferring in uh, transforming india into into a developed nation what do you think how should uh, character building and integrity be inculcated among students just now you took a word i will work with integrity and succeed with integrity but you know what i personally believe You see, we, we, for example, when I was uh, a long, long ago, uh, nearly half, more than a half century ago, when I was studying in college, uh, there was one uh, reverend father, rector, the highest in the Jesuit system. He will come every Friday. He will give a talk one hour on moral science class. This moral science class will talk about great human beings. Like uh, Saint Augustus, and uh, then Omar uh, Khalifa, Khalifa Omar, and uh, Lord Buddha, Einstein, and Mahatma Gandhi. So their life, how the young people in their young age, what transformation took place that become a great human beings. So I personally believe that it is essential that uh, the students should learn. At least one hour in the moral science class, and which is very important. Where there is a righteousness, uh, there is a beauty in the character. Will you repeat with me, all of you? Yeah. Where yeah. there is yeah. righteousness in the heart, yeah. there is yeah. beauty in the character. Yeah. 
when there is beauty in the character there is harmony in the home harmony in the home when there is harmony in the home there is order in the nation when there is order in the nation there is peace in the world can you see if you have one quality if you acquire the one quality before the age of 20 then beauty in the character possible harmony in the home possible order in the nation possible and peace in the world is possible what is that one quality righteous in the heart who will give a righteous in the heart only three people can give father father mother in a spiritual environment father mother everybody can give father mother in a spiritual environment plus plus primary school teacher great primary school teacher these are the three people can give you righteous in the heart wish you all the best okay good afternoon sir good afternoon sir amit here amit from indian institute of management sir i have a question uh, corruption is deep rooted at every level in india so uh, as an individual uh, what a youth can do uh, like your example of anna azare he started very well but now the support is not there as we are expected so as an individual what what we youth can do if i tell you something you have to do will you do all of you will do yes sir you know we are 200 million houses in india india how much 200 million houses into 5 becomes billion right approximately 200 million houses in the house who is there father mother two daughters one son or two sons one daughter average right now hello questioner you have to hear me <laughs> what you think you have asked a question you have to hear also okay now in the house who are they father mother two sons one daughter two daughters one son now it is said in 200 million houses it is estimated 30 percent of the house are corrupt that means 60 million houses are corrupt home 60 million homes now just now you said father mother two daughters one son is it not imagine if there's a brave daughter brave son tell his father tell his father father if you learn wrongly give me a motorcycle or car i will not drive or you will know as a son or daughter such a thing happening how many of you will courage enough uh, courage enough to stop the corruption from home you start first there then everything we already law is there we to catch them and all but we have to start every one of us if it is a corrupt home we have to start okay both people who are clapping the hand they are agreeing they will do it also good afternoon sir <laughs> okay. last question last good afternoon sir where are you last question Okay. How, how an IT professional can contribute to DRDO? Well, see, IT is just like a, every field IT will go, okay? Um, every, like material, every field will go, right? No? IT also, every field it will go. Uh, so, the, for example, you find uh, ICT, Information and Communication Technology. Communication technology, IT joined together. Then, IT for biology becomes bioinformatics, it has become. There's a new science has come, what is called nano, info, info you know, nano science, information science, and bioscience. This becomes a nano robots that is going to be, uh, become. So it is everywhere you will find it will just get it will get integrated with the multiple branches. There is no unique IT or anything like that. It will get integrated with the multiple branches of science and human needs. Okay, education IT can be used. So everywhere you can. Be. Okay, friends, wish you all the best. But if you have any question, if you have any question which you want to ask me, my mail APJ at the rate of abdulkalam dot com. APJ. At the rate of abdulkalam.com, you said the name, 
ask for send a question 24 hours you get the reply apg at the rate of abdul club uh, dot com and also if you want the autograph also uh, you send the mail autograph photograph you will get thank you <laughs>
uh, at, at Indira recently, earlier the Professor Dhanakran sir was doing that and I want, I think all the institutes, the directors who are present here today to take up this as a challenge of getting many more of us youngsters who have all promised to share the vision of Dr. Kalam to become a part of the Nets and take this forward if you want to make this a reality. Uh, the members of the press, uh, the, the invitees from CII, of course, uh, the support system, the, the security and the police who are all here to make this uh, uh, successful and uh, uh, uneventful function as far as those events are concerned. Thank you for all being there and I uh, look forward to uh, all of you being coming back to Indira for many more of events like this. Thank you very much.